Tetris attack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, take it away. All right. All right, so just before we begin, we're going to uh, say just a quick few things about the game uh, for people who may be unfamiliar with it. So uh, there's going to be 12 stages that are in the game total, and you'll be able to follow at the middle of the screen. It'll show you which stage that they're on. Uh, most of these uh, participants will be looking for sub-20 second times, and that's usually a good average. If uh, it goes like a little bit above 40, that's when it's going to go a little bit bad. But uh, uh, our runners that we have up here, starting from the right, we have Cards of the Heart, FFR Pro, Darkwing Duck, and Edo Bean. All of them have a top 10 time on the leaderboard, so this is going to be a really close race. So if, with the crowd's help, oh, okay, yeah, we have a Psych for over here, uh, we have Alta Biscuit, I'm BB Forky, this is Flaggle Stan, and then Dark Aries. All right, so we're going to get this underway. If I could have some help with the crowd, we're going to do a countdown from five, and we'll start it with me. So five, four, three, two, one, go! go. Okay, so this is Tetris Attack. We'll quickly go over the mechanics here during the early stages. The objective that all the runners are trying to do here is fill the enemy's screen with garbage and then have the time run out on them. And that's how they lose. There are three ways you can send over garbage. One is a combo, where you clear more than three blocks at the same time. A chain, where you clear a block and then... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> 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 okay then. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> looks like we had a little bit of a misstep here at the start, but no lead is safe in this game. There is any any one stage can be the one that ends your run. So uh, don't count Darkwing out just yet. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, a chain is when you clear a block, which then blocks drop into another clear. The more, the bigger the chain, the thicker the block that sends over, and then the less common chain in this run, which is the gray block. Clearing those sends garbage. Also blame Poochie. <laughs> There's a little joke around in the community where Poochie tends to like end a bunch of runs and just troll you a lot. But I still feel Poochie did nothing wrong. <laughs> Get off this couch. <laughs> <laughs> But as Alta said, uh, m what the speedrun's going to have in it, uh, they're going to be utilizing these chains and combos. And a lot of the Ooh. early AI is going to uh, not do too much. They'll get a couple clears and maybe clear some garbage in the meantime. So it's basically the garbage stacking game where they're going to be sending as much as they can. Typically, it's going to be like a moderately sized chain, like a five or a six with some like five or four combos mixed in between. Yeah, because these players, they're capable of doing something called the mystery chain, whereas if you create a chain large enough, it will start to show question marks, or the actual number if you change in the settings. But that's actually detrimental to the speedrun here, because if you send them too much, it's just not going to help you at all. And Edo Bean with the blame Poochie to the max here. <laughs> <laughs> so the most that the early stages can do to you and cards and Edo Bean both uh, had struggles with Poochie there but um, the most they can do is uh, do a clear on the garbage they usually don't counterattack much in the first couple stages as we get towards the end of the game not only will they be able to clear garbage but they will be able to waste more time by creating change and sending garbage of their own Along with a couple of things that they need to keep in mind when they are sending over garbage, combo garbage will take a little bit longer to send than the chains, so you won't see some of them s start like another chain uh, quickly because they want to wait for all of the garbage to drop. And they don't want to send something too big because the bigger the garbage block is, the more lag it's going to 
induce on the screen. So typically, if you put some combo garbage on top of like bigger garbage blocks, it'll be a less of a screen shake, and it usually leads to a quicker kill. And as you can see from Darkwing's screen, the lag can be really bad in this game. And especially with all the flashing blocks with, when a lot of garbage gets cleared. So it looks like right now we have uh, cards in FFR neck and neck here on stage six. And Edo being in Darkwing not too far behind with stage five. And like Ulta said, uh, with how this game runs, it, no lead is safe. And you'll be seeing coming up in the next uh, couple stages, we're going to be entering the cave, which is the last four stages. And you'll see like a significant AI spike, and they'll actually and be prioritizing different things. Cards really pumped up with that 15-second blarg <laughs> on stage six. <laughs> Whenever you can get a sub-20 time, that's really good. That's the magic number. Oh, a big clear from the AI on card screen. This opens up the door for FFR to take the lead, potentially. Mm -hmm. Every clear just wastes so many seconds that someone can gain back on you, especially since most of these stages are going to be averaging between 20 and 30 seconds, so you need every second that counts here. So another thing to mention is that the AI in this game isn't... Even on the hardest difficulty, they aren't that smart. They tend to... Uh, once the garbage is clearing, they stop moving their cursor. And if their cursor is low enough, they work from the top to the bottom, as you can see there on Darkwing's screen. And he was able to take advantage of that. So if you can get the cursor down low and send a bunch of garbage over, it's usually a guaranteed kill. All and right. Cards with a 24 on Raphael right there. And he will be the first going into the cave. Right. And what's so special about the cave, uh, it's actually the first time the AI is going to be acting a little bit differently rather than, like, their cursor speed will get faster, but they're going to be prioritizing chains themselves. So if they have, like, a bunch of blocks at their disposal that just, like, seem to fit in line, you'll see them go for really long chains sometimes, and that can just uh, send a big garbage block to your side as well, causing more and more lag and it, it can cause for much longer time. So mostly what they'll be looking for here, I would b say is like sub 30 and sub 40 fights, because they definitely do go a lot longer than the uh, first eight stages. And again, to stress, the no lead is safe. In the, in the first Tetris attack tournament we had online just recently, FFR and Cards were against each other, and Cards had like, what, a stage and a half lead at some point? And then a two-minute Bowser later, and FFR was able to take take the win there. Yeah, you can have a two two-stage lead right at the end, and once you see Bowser, you'll you'll see why he can troll because his cursor speed is just unreal. <laughs> Ooh, Edo being one line short—that's the <laughs> constant curse of Tetris Attack. <laughs> Still manages to get it, though. Mm. Darkwing and Edo are basically neck for neck as they're going to be entering the cave right now. And Cards has pulled himself off to a really respectable lead right now as uh, FFR Pro is having a minute <laughs> plus on Hookville right now. And just being unrelenting here with the garbage clear. He's just going for second tier right now, which is just the garbage above the bricks. And Card's starting to pull away here, going into Magic Koopa, now with a two-stage lead over everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my. This is really this, unlucky for This FFR. is revenge for the tournament <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, this is a really close race for second right now. And yes, Edo Bean has caught up to FFR after being a stage behind for most of the race. <laughs> And even with Card's big lead, we're going to stress it again. <laughs> Don't think it's locked down right now because you could see another minute and a half on his screen this time. <laughs> yeah, Magic Koopa's already doing his thing. He loves to waste time in these runs. Oh, the second tier! The second tier for Card's there.
Wow. <laughs> he does manage to get it off right there. For those who don't know second tier, if you can tell there, it's just when the CPU will scan to like the second row of blocks that's on its screen. But he's going to be entering Bowser here, so this is the final test. If he gets good enough RNG, he's going to be able to take this race. And time is will be immediately as soon as Bowser dies. So Edo Bean is now taking second place here so far. Or after more struggles from FFR on the uh, cave here. So it looks like Card sent enough to top off Bowser, but will... Oh, maybe not. Ooh. Ooh. That looked like a force kill from Darkwing there. Ooh. Bowser's doing some chains right He's now. He's doing his thing. <laughs> He's going to be staying alive a little bit longer and gets that oh second tier up there. Oh, my God. This is unreal right now. <laughs> this is why we stress that anything yeah. can happen. And, and there are every other, other racer is on Kamek right now, so they can make a comeback here. As Bowser is still like doing more and more clears. Is he going to uh, have enough here? Yep. Oh, my. So FFR is now entering final Bowser. We've got a race here. <laughs> this might be. Is this going to be? Oh, oh my oh, third tier! <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh man. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Oh. Uh, oh my oh God. My. Bowser just staying along. Darkwing oh, is going to be going, he but got that's it. it. He finally got <laughs> it. Time for cards. Thought for a second there, he was about to steal it away again. <laughs> Can Darkwing get second place here? FFR's got a good look on his screen right now. Uh, Bowser's looking like he's going to waste a lot of blocks. So it will be a close race for them. Edo's still been stuck on Kamek right now, but still can make a comeback for sure. And FFR is time. And Darkwing right behind. Right behind. Wow. Good job. <laughs> Let's cheer at Obin on, everyone. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, good. Let's Come go, on, guys. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I should mention this is kind of a like a really hard position to be in once you get on uh, one of these opponents. If you are low on blocks yourself and you're trying to send garbage to the opponent, it's really, really hard to keep them topped off and they can just end up clearing and getting more <laughs> blocks. Meanwhile, the best way for you to get blocks is to raise your stack and since you're pinned down with the bricks, there's you just have to go with what you're given. This might be enough. Mm. Oh, 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 the delay on the garbage. The combo blocks not but, being kind. But can't... Oh, is that a chain down there that I see, that, too? Yep. <laughs> oh. Blame Poochie. Blame Poochie. <laughs> Blame Poochie. <laughs> You got this, Edo. This might be a good setup here. If, the, if she's lucky enough, she might be able to get the kills that falls. There and it there is. There it is. <laughs> 27 seconds is a really, really good rebound off of that, too. So It's kind of reminiscent of Pokemon Puzzle League, where if a round goes too long, you, you sometimes want to reset and try again to try and get the quick kill. But the rounds are usually so quick in Tetris Attack that it's not worth it. 
Yeah, surprisingly for a lot of the games in the series, there's like really differing strats just based on how the AI, AI is programmed in each game. Yeah, it's also why uh, Tetris Attack is a completely separate category from its Japanese counterpart, uh, counterpart Panel de Pond, so. Oh. Oh, the free chain right there from the garbage. Actually, that. And oh, another, another one. one. I was going to say, if you have the separate stacks like that and there's no chains lined up, it usually can be a good thing. Here he goes. <laughs> uh, he's digging himself into a hole here. This might be it. Oh! oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Bowser, please. Uh, there he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to say a big congrats to all the runners. Uh, <laughs> This definitely isn't an easy game to run, and I'm pretty sure all of them have been playing this since probably they were younger, and uh, they put in so much work to the race, and like everything leading up to it, it's been really cool to see the community just really hyped for this, so. Uh, Edo, your time was 14.24. Cards, you were at 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Damn. FFR Pro, you are at 10 minutes and 52 seconds. And Darkwing, you don't count. Uh, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were at 10 minutes and 56 seconds. Awesome. But yeah, uh... If you guys want to learn more about it, uh, you can go onto the forums on speedrun.com and just check out any of the games. We have a Discord link, so come in and say hi to us and play with us. But that was Tetris Attack, and I want to appreciate everyone. Thanks for watching. So let's hear it one more time. Darkwing Duck, FFR Pro, Ed O'Bean and Cards of the Heart. They're our runners, our racers. Such great entertainment. Quickly, before everybody disappears, I have a $1,000 donation. Uh, giving a big shout out to Dan's Gaming 24, and it says, can we have Doom Guy kill the animals? Um, I need a drink, I'm sure they need a good drink, so let's toss it over to a Twitch commercial. We're back. We're prepping now for the next game. However, I uh, just want to say a big thanks to Twitch. They're one of our sponsors here at SGDQ. Um, and speaking of sponsors and people that we could not run this marathon without, we're going to run a quick ad for Power Up Audio. So take that away, guys.
So big thanks to Power Up Audio. And uh, what we're going to do is... All right, we are back again. So, right, I do want to say that I just got another thousand dollar donation from an anonymous donor that just says, Beautiful Tetris Attack play, you guys rocked. And I think we would all agree with that. Um, and we are going to go ahead and talk a little bit about one of our sponsors here. We're going to talk a bit about uh, World 9 Gaming. It's, uh, they are a premier computer console and arcade gaming provider for events across the Midwest and DC, I guess, since they help us with AGDQ. Um, they've been running our uh, practice room here. They have a very dedicated staff. They have a lot of tournament expertise, and they have expansive collections of over 2,000 games and 100 consoles. So if you have any information for booking or up, uh, booking them for upcoming events, head over to world9gaming.com. Now I have a special announcement. We are opening up another donation incentive. Uh, Shadex is willing to do us a two worlds bonus run right after the Skyrim um, uh, tomorrow, and that donation is set at $5,000. So if you want more two worlds, you put your money on that, okay? All right. Now we are going to throw it over to the interview in the back there. Uh, Tonic. Tonic and Co. back there are from the Tetris Attack. At this point, take it away. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Tonic. We're here on day four of Summer Games Done Quick 2016. I'm joined by our Tetris Attack racers. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing good. <laughs> I think this table is a lot worse than that table right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll agree. I'll agree. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you guys can talk about a little bit of how you got into Tetris Attack. Maybe FFR Pro, you want to take this one? Yeah, so um, I actually got into speedrunning speed back in 2013, uh, watching Awesome Games Done Quick. Uh, just seeing, you know, how they're playing all these games really fast and it's for charity. So I was like, whoa, that's, that's really cool. I have games I'm really good at. It. I can play those really quick. You know, I want to get in on the speedrunning gig. Yeah. And so that just, that's just how I got into speedrunning. It's like, you know, good causes. Totally. So what drew you guys to Tetris Attack in general? Oh, I've been playing it for countless years. I, I got into it when it first came out in 95, played it a lot as a kid, uh, got into speedrunning it in... 2000. I first started sort of in 2007, and then first published run was 2009. So yeah. I'm really old for running this game, <laughs> but uh, that's where I got started. Yeah, I've played this game ever since I was a kid too, and it's just like uh, it probably wasn't until like to be very honest, like maybe two years ago uh, that I finally started going into speed running, and then it wasn't like almost like maybe a year and a half where I finally decided to pick up this game again and be like, hey, I can do it. So I'm, cool. a, I'm, a, ba I'm a baby in the, in the group, so very. <laughs> I'm very the baby of the group, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I, wish, I wish I had gotten my start in Tetris Attack. I actually grew up with Pokemon Puzzle League, the N64 uh, okay. se sequel. I, yeah. I started playing that for a while, and then it was about, it was about 2013, I went on to Speedruns Live and found a group that was playing Pokemon Puzzle League on a daily basis. And I jo joined in on those races and got involved while there, and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about demystifying what goes into Tetris Attack. We see sort of a flurry of events that a lot of people can't connect with. So maybe, Darkwing, can you talk a little bit about like what it is you're doing, just on a very conceptual level? Well, well it's very... 
when I got to Star, I was all into chaining, and that's that's more for the score attack. That's when I what I focused on for the majority of uh, me playing Tetris Attack. For speedrunning, and it's a little bit different. You're going for a lot more combos. Um, like it takes you longer to do a a, a three chain than say a one ch a two chain with something with it a combo okay. with it. Um, so it's uh, the first thing that when I go into it, you want to start off with a good combo because that's you won't get that otherwise. And then start working your chains and try to get some combos in with those chains as okay. you're doing it. And you know it sounds all complicated, but you know you just play the game. You play the game. That's you know there's not a, there's not a quick way to get into it. You just play, have fun with it, you know. You get happy, oh, hey, I got a four chain for the first time. Oh, hey, I got a five chain for the yeah, first yeah. time. It, it's just so satisfying. You, you feel the improvement as you just keep playing it. It's just, and it's so much fun because it's never the same. It's always something different happening. It's just great fun. It's one of my yeah, favorite yeah. games. It's probably, it's the game I've, even before I started speedrunning, it was the game I played the most, and it's probably in the top three still now, even with speedrunning, and I've done a lot of games, so it's very, it's still something I'll play for a long time. Yeah, cool. Do you guys feel similarly? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I can't, I, I don't think I'll ever stop, stop running this game, to be quite honest. <laughs> as much as I want to, I don't think I will. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we could reflect a little bit on the race that we just saw. You want to you wanna take this one as the, uh, the champ? Oh, that... I'm I am honestly surprised that a 10 minute plus run actually won that race. I was expecting I was expecting somewhere in the low 915 930 range because I know FFR Pro here is probably the most consistent player in yeah. this in this race. So I was expecting him to pull, pull something really low. So when I ran into some rough patches in that mid game, yeah, I was yeah. I was really really wondering if if my time was going to be any good there. I'm I'm really surprised I won there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had I had a rough patch with uh Especially Hook Bell, he just just cleared like a madman. I yeah. just couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I kind of had this, you know, starting off with this very dry thing in your throat where you can't breathe. I, I think they call it a kind of a <laughs> <laughs> joking thing at the start. Um, but that actually kind of calmed me down, and, you know, I was a good stage behind until I got to the cave, and I had a reasonable cave yep. while everybody yeah. else had you know, ran into some clearing issues. So I almost got second out of it. I, you know, if everything being equal, I hadn't had that first death. I would have taken yeah, yeah. second, I think. Totally. But. Yeah, it was definitely like, that was like the worst I've ever done, <laughs> I swear. No, like, it's, it's really weird because I, I'm the baby of this group and I've actually just recovered from surgery. So it's like, I was actually scared. I didn't think I was going to make it for this. Hey, I thought, you finished. Oh, That's it's great. It's like, uh, can I do this? Can I do this? And I'll be honest, like, I'm, I feel like I do do a good job. Like, me and Cards the other day, we were practicing, and we were just, like, we are on toe and everything, and it was just, like, bam, bam, oh, yeah. bam, like that. And I know they're, these guys are really great Tetris Attack runners, and I know some of them do Pokemon Post League a lot more, and it's, like, I've always been Tetris Attack. That's just been my thing. Oh, so I so feel like, I know, right? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But, I mean, it's just, I like I said, it's just great, and it's just, an amazing experience. This is my first run. I think everyone else here has oh, actually wow. had a, a run when I think about it. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like, what do you do? Uh, you me? get jitters, you get nervousness, you get like, you know, you got to shake it off and everything. But I, cool. you know what? I did, I did what I did, you know, like you, what can you do when you got to deal with RNG the game? You know? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, that's so. great. So very quickly before we leave, can you guys go down the line? Tell me what you want to see in the rest of the marathon. Are you looking forward to something? Oh man. Uh, if, Anybody that's not been here, you've heard it happen. People talk about it all the time. The stuff that happens off camera is like amazing. Like uh, if you guys were here for the, uh, and I, I'm going to give a shout out to Fast at CC if he's still <laughs> in here. Like if you, I would watch his run if you haven't already. But, you know, at the end of the week, yeah, you know, he kind of goes into what goes on back here yeah, with the yeah. kind of with the uh, you know relationships you make the you know friendships you forge with people you've never got that's what we look forward to here in, in that and that's kind of like I still got another run yet so I can't really experience <laughs> that yet but uh, we'll be doing that uh, for me the next cool couple yeah. days through here great. So. for me it'd probably be well there's a couple things because I'm still doing my host shifting yeah. on yep. Friday for yep. the whole Kirby block and yeah. for Super Mario Maker and Pepsi Man so that's gonna be really fun oh yeah and to be yeah. very honest I'm really excited for my buddy's uh, gimmick run so that's gonna be really nice to see if anyone's never seen that game it looks cute 
but it is the most it is difficult yes, like that game. game I've ever seen in my life. And I even try it. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> so, deceiving. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, I guess for me, I know there's a lot of stuff I'm looking forward to, but I guess just to name a few, Task Block, Pokemon Red Race, Mario Maker, Super Metroid. Yeah, we got a lot on the block. And then SMRPG with Lack Attack, one of the best runners in the world. So. Absolutely. He's going to get mad at me for not saying that. <laughs> Sorry, Lack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Lack. Yeah. <laughs> Go find DW uh, after this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. How about you? Oh, uh, really? There's there's so much left to look forward, forward to. There, I can't think of the schedule right off the top of my, my head, but uh, I don't think my life would be complete without that Pepsi Man old <laughs> Pepsi. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's right. Like, there was there was one online marathon where it was displayed, and I think the audio was uh, was uh, bad, so we didn't get to hear the cutscenes very well, so I, I really want to be able to uh, experience that. Yeah. But I, I think my life would be complete with that experience. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I'm going to kick it back over to Tech. Stay tuned for more games. Thank you so much, you guys, and... I say Tetris Attack blew us away over here, so thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go back into doing a few more donations. So we have $150 from Mtrop, who says, All hail King Dime. I pledge this $150 plus $10 more every time Dime rockets himself in the face during both runs. Someone keep track. All right, I have a $5 donation from Mr. McCree, who says, I will donate $10 more if the announcer reads this in his McCree voice. Oh, God, this is going to be bad. It's high doom. I have 100